Going on a diet to lose weight seems like the logical thing to do when you want to lose weight. From keto to intermittent fasting to programs like Octavia, there's no shortage of diets to try. For many people, going on a weight loss diet is simply a setup for failure over the long term. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you why your body tends to resist weight loss. If you watch until the end, I'll be sharing the habits of people who successfully maintain weight loss in the long term and why these may be problematic. When it comes to our weight, it's important to understand that our body naturally has a weight range that it's comfortable at, and our bodies work really hard to maintain this range. This is called your set point weight. Your body will go to great lengths to bring your body back into alignment with this weight range. You can think of your set point range as your body's ideal weight. Now, this doesn't mean that this is your personal desired weight that you want to be, but it's the weight that your body is comfortable. At. Research suggests that the average person has a set point weight that's within the range of 10 to 20 pounds. Losing or gaining small amounts of weight may not be that difficult or even alarming to your body if it's within that desired range. Now, I'm sure you're curious how you can find out what your set point range is. Now, there isn't a formula or a specific lab test that you can request to figure out what your set point weight is, but you can figure it out through paying attention to what your body body naturally does. Your set point is the weight that you naturally maintain when you're not dieting. It's the weight that you maintain when you listen and respond to your body's cues of hunger and fullness. And it's the weight that you maintain when you're not obsessing about your weight or your food habits. You'll ultimately notice the weight that your body maintains when you're not trying to manipulate it. At this point, you might be wondering what's wrong with dieting to bring your body below the comfortable weight range. The thing is, your body ultimately likes to maintain the status quo and keep your body's weight relatively stable. You can think about it like a thermostat. Each of our bodies are set to a different temperature on the thermostat. When we try to change the thermostat through dieting, our body's natural way of maintaining our weight gets completely thrown off. The tricky part here is that for most of us, our bodies are more willing to rise above our set point weight than it is to fall below it. This means that weight gain is relatively easy and at the same time losing weight can be very difficult in the long term. When you're dieting there are several internal changes that happen, changes in hormones and different enzymes that encourage your body to regain any weight that you've lost and sometimes pay a penalty with extra weight gain. All of this can shift your body's set point even higher than it originally was to protect your body against future diets. Now you're probably wondering what about all the people who successfully lose weight and maintain it in the long term? I'm not saying that maintaining weight loss is impossible. It's just very unlikely for the majority of people. There's research from a national study called the National Weight Control Registry that suggests about 20% of adults are successful at maintaining weight loss in the long term. This success is defined as losing 10% of their initial body weight and maintaining this weight loss for a year. There's research that shows that most weight is regained within two years, and at five years, nearly all the weight that was originally lost is regained. With that being said, there are some very specific things that these successful losers did to maintain their weight loss. People who were successful in maintaining their weight loss for at least a year were engaging in very high amounts of physical activity on a daily basis. About an hour to 90 minutes every single day. They also maintained a very low calorie and low fat diet. They were weighing themselves pretty often. If they weren't weighing themselves daily, they were weighing themselves every week in order to catch very small fluctuations in weight to keep it in check. And then the other common behavior they did was maintaining their food restrictions consistently, meaning that they didn't eat differently during the week and then gave themselves a break over the weekend. They were very consistent and diligent with their food restrictions. So essentially, those who were the most successful at maintaining this weight loss 
acted as if they were still trying to lose weight. They had to keep that same level of intensity in terms of restricting their diet and being extremely active. Our bodies are so individualized and physiologically react very different to the same eating patterns and activity patterns. What could contribute to weight loss for one person could result in no change or even weight gain in the other. From my perspective, I'm all for healthy eating and being active, but in a way that's not overly fixated on the number on the scale or restricting your calories or just being so rigid about changes in your weight. I think focusing on calories and the number on the scale can be unhealthy for many people, both mentally and physically, since it can encourage people taking drastic measures to see a change on the number on the scale. This focus on weight and calories can encourage people to cut out entire food groups, things like carbs that are actually essential to our diet. Not to mention trying to completely restrict foods that you love can set you up to overindulge on those same foods later. Whether you're currently on a diet or thinking about starting one, if it doesn't turn out the way that you hope, just know that you are not the failure. The diet was never set up for you to succeed in the long term. This video is the first that I'm doing in a series on intuitive eating. In the next video, I'll be discussing what intuitive eating is and how it differs from dieting. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of intuitive eating or if you've even tried it out yourself. Once the next video is up, I'll have it linked here. But in the meantime, YouTube thinks that you would love this video. So go ahead and check out that one next. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay true to you.